Welcome back to the Marching to Madness College Basketball Podcast with a return guest. But this time you can see him because we're on Zoomcast. It's Coach Mike Hopkins of the Washington Huskies and one of my favorite conferences, the Conference of Champions. Coach, welcome in. Well, thank you for having me. Hope you're doing well. Doing well, and I hope you are too. Uh, you, you guys navigating through COVID to the point, you know, that we're at now. And then there's a transfer portal, and you changed up some coaches. You've got, I think, six new faces right on the basketball court. The winds of change are sweeping uh, the Huskies in Seattle. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was uh, you know, COVID this last year was a rough year. Um, we obviously uh, didn't meet the expectations that we had for the team, for sure. And, uh, you know, we, at the end of the year, some changes had to be made, and uh, we made some changes. Uh, a couple of the players decided to put their name in the portal and look elsewhere. And uh, we were able to go out there uh, with, with their assistant coaches and, and put together, I believe, that's a really good class of high character kids who, you know, really fit what we, you know, how we want to play defensively, offensively. Um, three or four guys uh, from the local area. So really, really excited about this upcoming team. Yeah, uh, you know, at 5 and 21, I, I was just curious. I, I'm assuming that might be your most challenging season ever as a head coach, assistant coach, or what have you. It's been the most challenging. I don't think I ever had a, a losing season in any sport from soccer to Little League baseball wow. to, to basketball since I've been, a, you know, even an athlete. And so it was really tough. But, you know, through all that toughness, you know, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about the things that you have to change to win in the, in, in the program and our situation. And I felt like there was the changes that were made were necessary. And, uh, you know, um, you know, we, we lost some kids. We gained some kids. I got two new staff members, uh, uh, White King Jones, who was uh, an assistant with Rick Pitino for years and uh, a head coach at, at, at University of Cal Berkeley. Um, he brings a, a, a lot of experience. He's worked in the corporate world at Nike. Uh, uh, he's a really good recruiter, but really good in player development with our big guys. And um, I hired um, a young coach named Quincy Pondexter, who was a, one of the great Huskies of all time and was just getting done playing uh, in the NBA, but had coached AAU basketball for the last couple of years and felt like it was the right time to get into coaching. And, and obviously, uh, you know, Will Conroy, the heart and soul yeah. of this place. So, um, we got a great energy um, with our guys right now, um, the returners, and uh, getting ready to get on the court next Monday with uh, the new guys. Yeah, and what are some things within the framework of the program that you either, I guess, implemented or changed? Well, I think a big thing is, you know, I, I think we have a system of, you know, our system works. You know, two years right. ago, we we won the league by three games, and we lost two of our last three games. I, um, you know – Year three, um, you know, we were really, we were playing well. We had beaten Baylor the first game of the year. Uh, we lost our point guard, Quad A Green, and we just were, were young and inexperienced and lost a lot of close games. And uh, I just felt like we got away from our, our recipe, which are, is that length and that athleticism that really allows you to be one of the better defensive teams. So I felt like that had to be, we had to get back to that length and that athleticism and that character. Um, and with the guys that we're bringing in, we've, we've got a lot of guys from the area. Mm -hmm. And when you get a lot of guys from the area, they take pride uh, in the backyard. And, uh, and so what do we do structurally? I don't think we did anything structurally. I think more so we did, you know, where we had, felt like we had to improve and we, we we hang our hat on the defensive end and we had fallen off and I think we're going to get back with the guys that we got brought in. Now I'm just curious going from the end of the Pac-12 tournament up to what right now how how did your offseason set up to this point? It was you know what we had to have some tough conversations with our team yeah things had to change when I say structure you know it gets back to there's you know the basic fundamentals of you know, your, you know, work ethic and, uh, you know, how you, you know, we, we like to say how you do anything is how you do everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, how you, you know, if you're dependable off the court, you'll be dependable on the court and vice versa. And so we had some tough conversations, but some real conversations and some guys decided to go elsewhere. 
that was hard, I think, uh, for so many people across the country. And maybe COVID had something to do with it, too. But there was a lot of guys putting their names in the portal. And it's, it's not easy. It's not fun. Um, but sometimes necessary. A lot of uncertainty. And, um, and then I had to make some uh, a staff change. And then, uh, you know, uh, Will Conroy and I at the time, uh, when we had to hire two new coaches, just started grinding on the, uh, on the recruiting front. And so not a lot of, you know, felt like it was in season, but it, it also, it's also invigorating when you mm -hmm. feel like you're, 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 you know, we got to, we got to learn, we got to, we got to do this. And, uh, and that was exciting. And, you know, nothing's easy in this business. Um, you know, it's hard to win. A lot of games come down to one and two possessions. Uh, and so we had to get the right kids. Uh, we had to hire the right coaches. And, uh, and that takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And um, I felt like we did a good job, and I feel we're on the right track moving forward. You know, that transfer portal has been incredible with all the comings and goings. I log into it like I do ESPN.com for crying out <laughs> loud every day just to see you don't know. Are you guys as coaches at a point where you generally have to stay at even closer touch with your players? You know, kids are changing. And I think just even in the workforce across the country in all different areas, I think people are reevaluating their lives. I think COVID, you know, uh, not that I'm an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I think a lot of people, you know, thought about their futures, where they were more than more than they normally do. And in yeah. today's day and age, there is a lot of communication, a lot of player management on campus. You know, kids, you know, kids spell love, T-I-M-E. You know, you got to be with them, working with them. Um, and, you know, I, I tell our staff all the time, the best recruits you have are the players on your team. Yeah. And, and so I think when kids know that you care, uh, they can trust you. They feel like they're getting better and they can see light at the end of the tunnel. I think that's the best recipe. But I'm not naive to think that every year you're not going to lose one, two, possibly three players. I think that could just be the possible trend that's going on in college basketball. Now, Jamal Bay and uh, Nate Roberts look like your leaders coming in for next year as upperclassmen. How are they working, you know, to take their game to another level? And what are they doing with some of the new guys off the court that's beneficial? Well, we haven't been able to be together yet. We start, mm -hmm. you know, there are some of the guys who haven't had the vaccine are still quarantining and we'll be together all on, on uh, Monday. But, you know, with the guys that returned, uh, Cole Badjama, Riley Sorn, uh, Jamal Nate, uh, Dominic Penn, we, 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 we did 6 a.m.s. We did 6 a.m.s, 20-pound uh, weight vest for 25 wow. all defense in the preseason. Jamal uh, and Nate did an amazing job leading and really growing in leadership roles, feeling comfortable with their voice and kind of like these are our standards and this is how we're going to live by them and, and then taking ownership of that. And so I saw a lot of progress in that regard. They're both, uh, they, they were here when we won the league a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so they've seen what really good looks like and they also see what really bad looks like. And so uh, them being able to come with that experience of, uh, of seeing both types of teams in two different lenses that they've had the experience, I think is really gonna benefit us moving forward in terms of getting the culture that we wanna be able to have. Those 6 a.m. practices, is that the first time you've implemented that in your career? And also, I was just gonna ask at 6 a.m., how, how, how does a player reveal himself about his identity at that point? Well, I've had so many people say to me, well, what's the difference between working out at 6 a.m. and 2.30 if you're doing the same thing? And I said, a lot. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like saying, okay, I'm going to run a five-minute mile compared to a six-minute mile. Six-minute mile, yeah, I might be able to go if I'm a good athlete and go do it. But a five-minute mile, you better be sitting there, okay, if it's four laps, I got to run that first one. You got to have a game plan. And so there's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of discipline. And then, you know, uh, taking care of yourself. We, we want to know who wanted to be here. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say uh, that you want to. And so it was one of the things that we did when we first took over four years ago. Uh, we got everybody up early. We did defense with no ball. Uh, and we worked exceptionally hard. And you could see uh, the leaders. You could see the workers. You could see who really wanted to be great. 
and that's why we did it. So have I done it in the past? Yes, I did it in year one. Um, I wanted to bring it back and really set the tone. And uh, they really stepped up and showed uh, a lot of character and uh, a lot of leadership. Obviously, the way you do things there, uh, you know, you're a proven winner. The program was a proven winner early. So looking at the uh, transfers that are coming in first, Terrell Brown and Dejan Davis are from the Pac-12. And then I know Emmett Matthews from watching him so much, you know, at West Virginia, as well as P.J. Fuller from TCU. Yeah, I'm not supposed to talk about P.J. Fuller okay. because he, he hasn't been in. Um, but I will tell you, we're just, you know, part of recruiting, sometimes you can get, you know, with talent and you watch them. And what we really wanted to do in this recruiting process was really get to know them, you know, get to know all of them, how you built, uh, uh, what's your work ethic like, talk to me about what you think a winning team looks like. And like you said, when you get a guy like Emmett Matthews, who's been a starter for two and a half years on a Sweet 16 team and a winning program, play for a great coach, he understands uh, how important defense is and teamwork. And he's a he's a he's been a born leader. Terrell Brown, a uh, local kid, uh, we had recruited him uh, last year and tried to get him uh, to come. He went to Arizona, started 90% of their games, uh, tough as nails, know what it takes to win. You know, that's those are the Dejon Davis, who I believe is, a, is an all league caliber player. Uh, he's got great speed. He's been injured. Uh, you got to get him healthy. But a guy who just talked about winning and taking pride of, 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 of being home. And, you know, a bunch of these guys, a couple of them have played together when they were growing up in high school and played against each other. And so there's kind of a built in little chemistry there, too. And that's just really exciting. And and that was the most important thing was really getting to know how they're built. You know, do you like to work? Do you love the game? Are you in the gym? Uh, you know, talk to them about academics, uh, loving to go to class. Dejan just got his degree from Stanford. I mean, yeah. it's just, you know, you want kids who want to be the best in everything that they do in life. And we want to create the environment to, you know, build that environment for them so they can reach their dreams. Well, tell me about Langston Walker. This is a 6'9 forward with a 45-inch vertical leap. He Langston is is a guy, and it's interesting because we were recruiting Emmett. Emmett had told me, Coach, I was the host of this kid on a recruiting visit. I'm just telling you, you need to call him. He's an unbelievable kid, and he was right. Uh, just like talking to Emmett, who could be a CEO of a company. You know, you're talking to him, and he's just got incredible energy and talking about how he likes to play and um, – and, uh, you know, watching film on him and then meeting him for the first time when he came on campus the other day, he's a freak show. Uh, you know, you have the top 1% guys who can jump. You know, you got, oh, he's a good athlete. He's a top 1%. He might be a top 0 .005 percent uh, uh, athlete. Um, but, you know, he needs to keep working on his skill, needs to keep working, but has a great work ethic. And um, just a great kid, lucky to have him. springboard. Oh, yeah. A great, great to hear. I, it's something to look forward to. I want to see him play already, right? Mm. When you look at recruiting right now with the portal and things, how does it change the way you approach it? You know, it's real interesting because I've heard, I've listened, I've asked questions. I, I hear a lot of people talking about, you know, heavy on the on the transfer portal and not necessarily high school kids because the high school kids are going to transfer anyway. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you get them on the back end. But I just, you know, transfer portal or not, you have to evaluate and know if they're good enough. And then they got to be able to fit what you want to do uh, as a program and then what you want to do in terms of building your culture. Do they fit that? Are they our kind of guy? Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a big part of, of that tool. So transfer portal, non-transfer portal high school junior college we just got to bring the right people in right. i think that's what it's all about i've seen a lot of freshmen change a lot of programs Jalen noel for us our first year was just an incredible player uh that that impacted and played right away so they're out there we just have to work we have to you, you have to comb the streets you got to comb the basketball world and just try to find the right guys that have that length and athleticism uh, that want to be great and everything that they want to do, you know, that they can do. And then we got to be able to go out and close the deal. 
Coach, you were talking about defense, and, and of course, you, you guys struggled last year on the defensive end. How, how do you rebuild a defense, or is it a rebuild just based on so many new people? Well, you know what? It's, uh, you know, our zone, uh, mm -hmm. our first year, we were, when we took over the year before, they were 12 from the league in defense, mm -hmm. and we were number one in defensive efficiency in our first year, our first yeah. two years. And so, you know, part of that is, you know, Matisse Leibel was just different, but it was the group of guys that really wanted to buy into the defensive end. And then they, they saw the effects of what the defense can do to an opposing team. And we've got, uh, we've, we, we, we've, I thought we brought in some really incredible length uh, the guys that have great work ethic. It's not going to be easy. It still is, you know, they've got some stuff to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, but we believe with the length and athleticism and the defensive mindset and their work ethic, the type of kids that they are, that you will be able to change it pretty quick, especially on the defensive end. Last thing, Coach, <coughs> name, image, and likeness is also on everybody's mind like the transfer portal. Uh, and it's going into – or it is in Congress, and I don't know how I feel about that, but the politicians hanging on. I guess if the right ones get a hold of it, it's good. But anyway, what's your take on name, image, and likeness? It's... Well, I'm still learning about it. Um, obviously, uh, it's been a hot topic. Um, I just can't wait until there's a universal, consistent rules uh, with guardrails that everybody plays by. Yeah. And uh, and but I, I am for, you know, players being able to use their name, image, likeness to benefit for themselves. I think Definitely. it's a great thing. I think even for, an, uh, an, you know, our university lives in one of the most incredible cities in the country uh, with some of the greatest companies. Um, we like to say you're going to have name, image and likeness forever. It's not just going to be a one or a two year uh, uh, deal. This is something that uh, if you go here uh, that you can really benefit from it. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's going to change the game, but I, you know, I, I wish it was a little bit more expedient in terms of the rules and understanding a little bit more in terms of how we can really help these kids, uh, you know, reach their potential in that area. Coach Mike Hopkins up in one of the most incredible cities in the world. I echo that sentiment, by the way. Seattle's awesome. Uh, so is the Seahawks and Pete Carroll. You know, that's, that's a must watch every Sunday for me. But anyway, I appreciate you taking time out, uh, you know, your busy schedule to come on and Zoom and podcast with us. And I look forward to talking to you down the road. It's great seeing you as always. Yeah. Good luck. I need to man. get a tan like you. Well, I tell you, you know, I hadn't been out this week, actually. I've been working and writing on stuff. But it's you it's, look it's, good. Thank I got to get. I got. I got to. I got to get out in the sunlight. There you go. Get you one of these shirts too. I love that shirt. <laughs> Have a great one. Go dogs.